Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday I've got an Erbauer mitre saw in for repair. See you in a minute. <laughs> Now one of my fellow shedders came up to me the other day and suggested I might like something for content and um, got me uh, out of his boot a mitre saw that he's got that has stopped working. He said it jammed up and then the blade's just spinning when it's on but it's not actually cutting anything so I'm not sure what it is. I think it's fairly simple. I suspect it's a broken uh, bla uh, belt on it if, if that's what's uh, driving the thing but we'll get in have a look at it see what we can do with it and see if we can repair it right so the first thing I'm going to do with this to make sure it doesn't kill me is to check it uh, electrically because I don't know anything about it and I've not used it I don't know what its history is or anything it's relatively new there shouldn't be any problem at all I'm going to see if there is an earth wire on it. It probably isn't because it's a more modern machine that's probably double insulated. But I will check and see. And no, there is no um, connection between any of the metalwork and the earth pin on the plug. So there's either a broken wire or no wire. And it's no wire as I have thought. Um, There's a screw missing from the cable clamp, which I think I will sort out with a new plug perhaps. 13 amp fuse and it's rated at 1800 watts, which is what about 8 or 9 amps. Uh, yeah, so 13 amp fuse is probably fair for it. We'll check the connections are tight. And what I'll also do then is just check to make sure that none of the live or neutral wires are a bit loose anyway. If I'm putting a new plug on it doesn't really matter, but we are going to put a new plug on later rather than now. So what I'll do is I will check to make sure that there is no connection between the live or the neutral and any of the metal work again just as a double check it's unlikely but okay so we've now established that it's as safe as I can electrically I'm going to try and plug it in and see what's going on I suspect it's the belt gone it's as simple as that I think because he said that the belt the wheel carried on going after it had stopped working and sure enough the blade will go round on its own so there's no resistance there at all. So I think it's as straightforward as that. Let's squeeze the trigger this time. And as you can see, that is just turning independently, but not very keenly. Certainly no connection with the motor, so it's time to get into wherever the belt is. It will be in the side housing, I'm guessing. We'll have to take this off. And then there's a cover plate there. And I'm hoping we don't have to go in any deeper because the motor is right up here at the top. So I'm hoping it's just under this cover plate here. But we'll make a start and uh, take all this apart and go on from there and then I think there are just two screws one there and one there so it's fairly straightforward I think this one it gets us to the motor the blade I mean yeah thread so it tightens up as it runs right 
So to release the head, just pull that little one back and we can get that off to lift. Take the blade out. There's a lot of sawdust and rubbish in there. I'll clean that up first, I think. Right, so that's got me precisely nowhere other than to be able to give it a clean a bit. Because it looks like the whole of the back of the motor unit comes off from these connections here. I'm not sure about the one in the middle, but we'll try the two either side. that one hadn't I? Screw those to give me a little bit of flexibility. Uh, there's a bearing on the back there, there's a gear there, there's a gear drive, metal spur gear off the motor. So it's all geared. So I'm slightly puzzled as to why it won't work, but let's some of this goo out and we'll come back when we've got all the uh, grease out of it. So half an hour in and I think I'm getting close, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but there is a feed from the motor onto that gear, and that is working fine, spur gear into that, that gears into that one, and again that gear is registering with that one, fine, no problem at all there, there's no slippage or anything in there, however, if I hold the drive shaft there, that piece on the other side, and turn this, you can see what's happening. The motor is firing the gear, but this gear is not transmitting power. So I'm not sure what has been working in the past that's broken now. I'm going to just undo, there's a little circlip on the end here. I'm going to try and get in with a pair of circlip pliers if I can. Yep, spread it apart. Get that out where it pings off and you lose it, but let's see what we can do. That should release the gear off the shaft and explain what's going on. onto that shaft. So I'm wondering whether it's just wear on the shaft, whether it was an interference fit before. Right, so I've just unscrewed the top gear and its washer from the other side. That came out easily out of the bearing at the top. So that leaves me with just this shaft here that I can't get in at to get the bearings out and I can't get the gear off because it's 
damage the diameter of this shaft. Right, the gear's nearly off but not quite and I'm struggling with the last bit so I'm just going to try and put a bit of heat into it and see if I can expand it just enough to drop drop off a blowtorch on it and just to, just to get the whole of the gear around the shaft itself warm see if that will give me uh, enough expansion to make it easier to get out yes and it's come brilliant and sure enough that's where the problem is I'm hoping you can see it there there is just the merest outline of a woodruff key half that's in that shaft right where my fingernail is there and in the actual gear itself you can see there's the other half of it so the actual key has sheared off in there the shaft itself's a bit poorly but there's not much I can do about that. I can tidy it up and clean it up as much as I can. But if I can get these bits of Woodruff key out, get a new Woodruff key, and we can slide it into that hole and push the shaft back on, we should be back in business. Basically, that's all that's transmitting the power through. Tease it out, there we go. That's it, that's half of it. At least we know what the problem is. Uh, same with the actual gear. It's a bit tougher. And there's the other half just come out there. So if nothing else from that, from the two halves, we can decide the size of the original and either get or make a new one but that's where the problem is so the original key was just over four millimeters deep four millimeters wide eight millimeters long so if I can find some 4x4 four four metal stock to make that back up a new one uh, I'll do that otherwise I'll have a look on the internet I'm fairly sure that eBay will come up with something as I say you can see that that is just sheared in half and that stopped the drive going with the power of the internet a couple of days later we've got the tool steel arrived I think it feels like it certainly um, so that, that little key steel should enable me to be able to get this thing sorted out and put back together again that's all that we need a piece of four millimeter square stock all I've got to do now is just cut an 8mm length off that and we can hopefully fit it in I'll just have a look and see if it fits in the requisite place yeah that'll be file nicely into a little uh, piece to fit in there so we'll go away and file that up I'm going to have to just give that a little dress with a bit of emery cloth I think and then we can get the cog hopefully I can get it warm again and slot it back on probably with a bit of Loctite but that uh, also goes into that keyway once we get it filed to size <laughs>
So here we are, a quarter of an hour later, we have our piece which is the same as the other one, only in one piece. We can drop that into there. And get the cog and just tap that back on. And I think at that point we'll be ready to go. I'm just going to clean the shaft up a bit and we'll get this warm, tap it on and I think we're done at that point. I'll just clean this shaft up first. It. That's got my groove back for the uh, little circlip. So all I need to do is pop that on, reassemble, and we can try it out. The most important thing I mustn't forget to do is to pack it with grease again, because we took all the grease out. But that can now slot into there. Cog on and the circuit. Put the other cog on. Screw that in from the other side. And I'm just going to reassemble it now, which is basically a re reversal of what we did before. And we'll come back to you when uh, when we've got it done. Right, so let's put it all back together, tighten everything up. I'll put my shop vac on it to see if we can keep the dust down a bit. I'm going to try it on a bit of hardwood and see if it now cuts. good to me. Nice cut. Seems to be working fine. We'll see how it goes over a day or two. So once again we've saved something from landfill uh, and again it's one of those stupid things that that entire piece of kit was ruined by one tiny piece of steel that split in half and it's cost us you know two or three pounds to get it repaired I think so pretty happy with that it seems to be working okay I'll just put the new uh, clamp screws in for the cable on the plug and uh, we can get it back to its owner okay so once again we've got uh, a job that we've beaten the landfill and got something back on its feet again. It's a shame with this in this instance because it was only a couple of years old. It's a, a very nice saw that's not got any real wear on it at all. So it would have been disappointing if we couldn't mend it. But uh, as it happens, it looks like it's okay. I'll give it back to the guy and see if he can uh, 
use it for a week or two and see if it's running okay but I think we've got there in the end so I hope the video was of interest look forward to seeing you next time when we'll be doing something different in the shed see you then bye